boot. In the boot. Hi, guys. Thanks for staying. You guys want to just want me, watch me check my smartphone the whole hour? This is exciting. It is a smartwatch. I'm a gear whore. I love uh, smartwatches. Yes, this is the Samsung Gear 2. So it only works with Samsung phones. That's the downside. But I'm probably going to get the Moto 360, which is circular. And I think it's going to work with iPhones, too. And then the iPhone will probably have their own iWatch eventually. And if they can make iPhone 6 as big as this Note 3, then I'll probably go back to iPhone. Because I've been an iPhone guy for many years. And I like Android just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I like the customizability. It's more open. But I'm just used to Apple. Just like Android people are used to Android. Um, but they're both good systems, I think. They're both really good phones. But I love toys. I love being able to get my notifications on my watch. That way, I'm not checking my phone during sessions. Because every actor does that, believe it or not. There's just enough time in between takes that you can pull out your phone and check like Twitter, Facebook. All right, next. Like, okay. And then all that stuff. It's kind of funny. But this way, I can just check my watch. It's like, Kyle, you're really, do you have to be somewhere? <laughs> you keep checking your watch. I'm like, no, I'm good. good. That's right. I think it has voice search on it, but you can't take your calls on it yet. That might feel a little weird. Hello, Dick Tracy, come in. Ah. But most people don't know who Dick Tracy is anymore either. Oh, okay. All right, yay. It's kind of funny that, uh, you know, years ago, smartphones were just dumb phones, and they were phones. And they, they started like a brick in the mid-'80s, and they got smaller and smaller, and now they're getting bigger and bigger. And then there's tablets, but now there's phablets, which can be used as phones. So then suddenly the phablet will shrink to the size of an, an, a mini iPad, and then that'll become the phone, and then there's truly one device. Everything just all comes together, right? We're so weird. <laughs> but I digress. Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm a voice actor. Hi. I'm very happy to be in Arkansas with you guys this weekend. I haven't been to this part of the state before. I, I went to DrakeCon years ago in ben, 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 Bensonville, the corporate headquarters of Walmart. Is that what that is? Yeah. Uh, and then I went to A2F. Where was that held? Here? Oh, then I have been here. Never mind. It's fun getting old. It's fun being senile. Who are you? What's your name? Why am I here again? Oh, I do voices. Sometimes I get paid to let them out. Yeah. That's cray cray. So yeah, I started in radio and uh, I transitioned into voice acting because lifelong love of cartoons and animation. I grew up in the 70s. So anime as a word didn't exist yet. We just knew there was something different about it, like Speed Racer, Star Blazers, Battle of the Planets, Robotech, Akira. Uh, these things came out and you're like, whoa. These things are so much more detailed than American cartoons and they tell deeper stories and the characters are cooler. That's neat. So why do I want to be a cartoon actor so bad? I don't know, I don't know. I like the wacky, zany characters. I, I love it, but I love getting to play any character. If it's something as simple as, ah, bah, meaning you're dead, or something a little more meaningful, <laughs> I love it all. I love a chance to, to do that. And, you know, I've been a lifelong geek. You know, Star Wars changed my life in the 70s, and I'm a genre nerd. I love sci fi, I love gadgets, I love video games, comic books. I don't read manga because I can't get used to reading right to left. Yeah, yeah, and anime, I haven't, the, the, the only recent anime I've seen, and I haven't seen every episode of it, because I don't have cable anymore, and I just get distracted by life. Ooh, shiny. Uh, Space Dandy. I love Space Dandy. And you'll, you'll be able to hear me on an episode next month. 
I'm super excited. So I want to be on Space Dandy, and it happens. Like, oh, this is cool, and I'm gonna get spoiled. I want to be in Star Wars. <laughs> Still waiting for George Lucas to call. He has nothing better to do, so you know. I do have ties to Disney. I've had ties to Disney since 1996 because I worked for Radio Disney. And then it came full circle. So when I recorded for Wreck-It Ralph, the producer, I was telling him, I said, this is a, I've come full circle. I've come circle of life. And like, what are you talking about? I said, I worked for this company. And here I am again, working for this company. But not really, because you're freelance. You're not an employee, technically. You're a work for hire. Uh, but yeah, I've gotten to do the Marvel stuff. I worked on Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes a few years ago on Disney XD as Super Scroll. And I did something on Nicktoons or Nickelodeon, I forget which channel. It was a show for little kids, uh, NFL Rush Zone, which is uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've made my career mostly out of doing anime and video games, which I'm very, very proud of. I love being associated in a genre that I love so much. Because um, again, growing up in the 70s and 80s, video games didn't talk to you then. They were just beeps, boop, 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 you know, 8-bit. They weren't even 8-bit. They were just like even less than that. They were 1-bit. <laughs> they were so simple. And now they're movies that you play. Um, now me, I'm into fast, instant gratification things like fighting games, ra racers, you know, platform stuff. The RPGs are the most popular, and that's where I make my bread and butter. All the cutscenes. You guys love stories, so thank God for that. Because, uh, uh, yeah, you guys help influence my purchases sometimes. I wasn't gonna fi play Fire Emblem Awakening, but I signed so many autographs on it, I decided to check it out. It's like, wow, this is fun. This is cool. But normally, I'm not a detail-oriented gamer. Uh, I, I would just rather point, shoot, button mash, and do all that, because if you look at the stats, they're all just numbers that blur together. It's like, I don't know what this means. Does anyone relate to that? Does anyone have that problem? And then I play Pokemon for the first time. Um, and I'm like, okay, I get why this is popular. It's fun. But then it's like, it's a little repetitive. So I kind of just like, all right, moving on. So my favorite thing to do now with my 3DS is actually just collect street passes. So if you have your 3DS, have your street pass on. You'll probably see me, you'll collect my me, which looks like me and says, I'm Kyle, I'm a voice actor. That's how you know it's me. <laughs> I've been able to unlock a lot of street passes because I take them to conventions. You take take your 3DS to a convention, that's where you unlock all your puzzle pieces, just so you know. It's a good thing to do. But I'm doing geek talk later. I don't know why I'm making this about geek talk. This is just supposed to be about me and voice acting. So you guys can ask questions at any point. Yes, sir. Classic? Oh, yeah, totally. I grew up on, on Looney Tunes and all that. Uh, I don't think I'm qualified to, you know, could even hold a candle to what Mel Blanc did back in the day. I mean, nowadays you have the likes of Billy West, you know, t today's cartoon champions. I think Billy West has been the voice of Bugs Bunny for years. He's not the current one. They usually have more than one. Uh, I'm friends with Bob Bergen, who's been voicing Porky Pig for the past dozen years. Um, or longer, actually. I'm so envious of him because he was such a fan of Mel Blanc that back in the day when he was a teenager, he, he looked in the phone book. Remember those phone books? They had everyone's number in a physical book. He called every Mel Blanc in the phone book until he actually got Mel Blanc on the phone. <laughs> and he recorded it. And if you go to his website, you can hear the audio <laughs> of him. And Mel Blanc sounds a little upset at first. Like, How'd you get this number? Why are you calling me? It's like, oh, I'm a big fan of you, Mr. Blank. I was just wondering if you could just help me and inspire. I, I want to do what you do. And it's, like, it's very cool. It's very cool to hear a piece of nostalgia. Um, what's that? Huh? Oh, your 3DS? You're trying to see if you get my street pass? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the magic formula to that is. It's like, 
some people hold them and wave them in the air and it's like they, then they touch. It's like, I don't think that's how it works. It'd be funny if it did though. 3DS mating season or something. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Other animes I enjoyed doing through the years. Uh, I love doing Gurren Lagann as Kamina. Uh, he's not around very long, but uh, <laughs> he's still excellent. He's still he's still manly. Yeah, he's he, that that was that was a blast because I knew it meant a lot to the fans, and then it's like, wow, I I better do good on this. See, I, I don't watch shows in Japanese because. It's not that I think one is better, I just have a preference. I prefer them in English because I don't have to read at the same time. If I wanted to read my anime, I'd buy manga. If you read subtitles, you'll get caught up reading the subtitles and miss the animation, and then suddenly it goes to the next screen. It's like, wait, I wasn't done reading the pre... Uh, who said that? What just... What? Oh. And then if I'm trying to eat, I stop eating because I'm reading. And then it goes to action, and I'm like, okay, I'm done. So I remember getting all the hate when Gurlagon first aired on Sci-Fi. It's said, Kamina's terrible. It's like, oh. And then people who hadn't seen it in Japanese, Kamina's awesome. It's like, all right, I get it now. The otaku just hate it because it's in English, period. It doesn't matter. It's just because it's in English. They hate, 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 hate. Uh, and you're biased by what you hear first. I think that's true. That's why a lot of people will say, it's like, well, I like some of the voices in English, but I kind of prefer the Japanese performance because I heard it first. Very rarely will you hear somebody go, the, the original Japanese of Cowboy Bebop is superior. <laughs> I think even the creator of Cowboy Bebop says the dub's better. <laughs> it's like, that's rare. That's what I, yeah, I would, I would have killed to be on Cowboy Bebop. I now work with those people, just Cowboy Bebop is done. It's been done for a decade, but. Uh, that meant a lot. Different shows that have uh, really been so much fun to do. Bleach, another big one, Naruto. Because these are, these are those powerhouse animes that have hundreds and hundreds of episodes. Also known as job security. <laughs> That's good. Again, now anime doesn't pay enough to pay the rent, but it's nice that you have a recurring job because you don't have to keep auditioning for it. You are the voice of that character. So I know that if Ryu, if there's another Street Fighter or something with Ryu in it, I know they're going to call me. That feels good. That's like, that's one less thing I have to stress out about. Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, I was wondering if you ever remembered voicing Storm Rage from World of Warcraft? Do I remember voicing what in Warcraft? I don't think that was me. I, I voiced Algalon the Observer. In the Lich King. Oh, okay, because I remember my friend saying that you were so loud, and I was going to say, you were really strong. I have a friend that absolutely loves the Lich King. Uh huh. Oh. That's fine. I like it. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of funny. People will swear up and down that I'm whatever, and then they'll send me the YouTube clip, and I'm like, that sounds like me, but I know for a fact it's not me. I know what I've worked on, I'm pretty darn sure. And then there's things where it's like, are you, is this you? Because you said it was you. And then it turns out not to be me and I find out I got replaced. <laughs> That's not a good feeling. I still got paid. I'm still in the credits. Like I'm in Sonic Generations as Big the Cat, but they took him out. So I'm just in the credits. <laughs> Anger, rage. Hey, Froggy. He had a whole playable level. But apparently, as I understand it, Big the Cat is Jar Jar Binks to Sonic, so. I like voicing Big too. I inherited that role from John St. John, Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem voiced Big on almost all the Sonic games. And he hates that character. <laughs> He gave me the official Sega plushie of Big the Cat. It's like, good riddance, here you go. <laughs> like, all right. He looks cool. Yes. In Street Fighter, well, I'm not picky. I, I just want to be cast. <laughs> but 
I remember trying out for Ryu, Ken, E Honda, uh, M Bison, and El Fuerte. And um, I thought I might get E Honda. Not that I wanted him, I just figured, I don't know. Um, but I thought, okay, it'd be awesome to get Ryu because he's one of the leads, or he's always on the box art. I don't know if he's the, the lead. Him and Ken are like equals, pretty much. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess so, yeah. They must have lifted fight sounds from another game because I didn't record on it. Well, then if it's not in English, then yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, when there's games that have multiple licenses and multiple companies involved, chances are it's not going to have an English version just because they just deem it too expensive. Because they're already splitting profits amongst, you know. Remember Shonen Jump All-Stars on DS years ago? Wouldn't that have been awesome to come out here? But it had One Piece and it had DBZ, Naruto. It had all these tons of all these top-tier titles all in one game. But that would not come out here. It just wouldn't. Switch to English, but we didn't record it in English. This sounds like, it's, oh, okay, so the subtitles mean English. It's like, all right, it's like, that sounds like a bootleg. <laughs> or some guy in Taiwan speaking bad English. <laughs> Bereave it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Next. Yes. No, 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 D DJ, not Dead Mouse DJ, but on the radio DJ. Uh, I did that professionally from the early 90s to uh, 2005. Uh, and then I did, was a podcaster. So I had a geek news podcast I did with my friend for like five years. And I do miss radio. I got my start in it. It's fun playing music and everything and... I'm doing all that, but that's what podcast does now. Podcasting gives the power of radio to anybody with a microphone and an internet connection. Back in my day, you had to get an FCC license. You had to, you know, take a test and you had to take classes to be a broadcaster. But now you just do it from home and you have a worldwide audience on demand. If you want to do a show that is like super duper specific about whatever topic, Chances are, there's someone in the world that wants to hear about that. It's like, I talk about the rare Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You're going to have a, an audience. I'm not going to say it's going to be thousands or millions or anything like that, but you'll get hits and you'll be shocked. It's like, wow, there's some dude in Israel that listens to my podcast. I think that's so cool. And then when I stream, I stream just from my house and I'll have the webcam on. I'll talk to fans. I'll have people logging on from Ireland and Australia and all that stuff. And it's like, what time is it there? It's like, it's like, you know, 18 hours ahead, mate. And like, it's like, I'm about to go to bed, but here you are streaming. <laughs> like, like, wow, that's trippy. I love the power of the internet. Yay, interwebs. Yay. Next. Questions. Okay, you, sir. Yes. Cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Ha <laughs> Gosh. God, yes. Aspiring voice actors need to move where the work is. Depends on what you want to do. I'm assuming you want to do character stuff, games, animation. Yeah, but I just like voice. It's fun. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. Like yeah. 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 
commercials, yeah. Yeah, that's that's tough. I mean, the bigger city you go, the more opportunities you have. But at the same time, it's also more competitive. And when you do it online, it's even more competitive because you against the world. Everyone with a nice home studio and you're sitting there with a, a USB mic and you record in your closet, whereas someone has invested thousands of dollars having top-notch equipment in their home and they can deliver the audio in full crisp digital HD, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then, I mean, I guess they got to that point. They invested in it and everything. They took classes. Uh, you know, some stuff you can do from home, certainly. Um, but networking is also a key. You know, you... you Start talking online, Facebook request, or just follow on Twitter, follow voiceover blogs, because you never know. You may, you may meet someone who has a connection that could listen to your demo and go, hey, I think you should submit to this. They're looking for voices. Indie games is a booming thing now. People with that do flash animation on new grounds and stuff, there's a lot of these new indie games for PC. They're not necessarily console, because they don't have the budget, but... And all these Kickstarters, a lot of Kickstarter animated stuff, that's a good way to, to, to get your foot in the door. And some of them even pay. Not a lot, but it's something. And I think that's the future. Indie gaming, indie animation, because and this is where the internet's going. This is where we as consumers go. We consume media online. People, more and more people are cutting their cable. More and more people are just watching stuff on demand. Netflix, Hulu. Crunchyroll, whatever, on their computers, on their smartphones. More and more apps, you know, as, as that industry booms, you know. Uh, so networking, get out there, start meeting people online. Um, see if you can get in a workout group, you know, people that just get together and read copy and kind of critique each other. That's helpful. Um, but eventually I think, yeah, you're gonna have to just move from the area because the opportunities are so sparse here. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've heard the advice before that you could just take your demo and do a grassroots thing, knock on doors, drop it off in person, but I haven't really ever heard success stories from that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you might have to take a couple for the team, you know, just not get paid because. Yeah. God, yes. Yeah. I worked on my student radio station for free because the trade-off is you're getting on-air experience. And then I got an internship, which is the only way radio stations will hire you is if you're a college student because it's against the law to work for free. But if you're getting a grade, that's considered compensation. So if you could find, if you're still in college, kinda, well, if you had enough prerequisites to be allowed to take, sign up for an internship and then go on your own and go to all the local Austin stations and say, hey, you have internships available this semester for like audio production or on air or marketing something in the broadcast field, that might be worth investigating. It may not necessarily segue perfectly into voiceover, but a lot of radio people also do voiceover. In commercials, but the struggle that VO people have or radio people have becoming voiceover people is they sound very announcery and like a DJ for everything. It's like that's that's not really acting, that's announcing. And that's a very specific thing, just like the in a world, that guy, that you know, the movie trailer guy, you know, that is acting, but it's it's very specific, you know. Or promos. Promos is like trailers for TV on an all new Walking Dead, next on AMC. You know, there's a guy that gets paid a lot of money to do that every week. I want that gig. 
but I don't know anybody in AMC. Joe! <laughs> yeah. It's tough. It's tough. And it will make you question your sanity and make you go, am I really meant to do this? Because everywhere I go, the door slams in my face. Um, but if you want it bad enough and you stick to it long enough, you might, might make a little progress. And I think you're going to do better in Austin than picking up and moving to a more major market like Dallas or LA or Chicago, where there is more work, but the competition's way more fierce. So cut your teeth in a smaller market. I think Austin's a good place for that. Yeah, no problem. I have what? I have five minutes? That's it? Really? Wow, I started late and I'm going to end on time. Okay, speed round. Yes. Um, I just want to ask, like, like Nick said earlier that, like, you know, his dream was always to play Kirk. Yeah. Is there any role that you wanted to play, like, you had a dream to play a character one day? Not necessarily, necessarily, because I, wanna, I don't want to take anything away from the people that have established that. I want to be Batman, but I know I could never do justice to what Kevin Conroy has done to Batman, or the Joker, Mark Hamill. Uh, or Bugs Bunny, Mel Blanc. I mean, I can't be those characters. It, I just want to be the next big thing, whatever it is. I want to be in a something that penetrates pop culture and 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 you know, like SpongeBob SquarePants or something. <laughs> but I mean, I would. I guess you could argue that I have already, because so many people come up saying you were my childhood because of Dragon Ball Z, because I was the narrator and Gohan. So you'd say, man, I know it. next time on Dragon Ball Z. Like, yay! Or, you know, I hate you. Why? Because I hear your voice and I know the episode's over. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Unless I say previously on Dragon Ball Z. It's like, nope, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. It's like, next time. Like, oh. <laughs> Fight you. I want to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Fun times. Yes, Goku? Any one in particular? No, not necessarily. Uh, but I mean, I mean, it's just like this triumvirate of currently working veteran talent, like Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, Billy West. Um, man, I just want to do what they do so bad. I want to be in the same room recording with them. And, you know, it, it feels good if you can impress a mentor or someone that you look up to and they're going, nice job. Like, that's really affirming. Really um, affirming and assuring and all that positive stuff. Yes, in 10 years. It takes 10 years to be an overnight sensation, just so you know. <laughs> yes, other questions? Did I, yes, sir. Hero or villain? Hero or villain? Uh, uh, villain, villain, I'll take villain. I'll take villain for 50. Alex, thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh huh. So when I was digging around, I saw you had done additional voices on Manboard, which I do own. And I'm like, <laughs> how did you come about that? Okay, Manborg is a uh, low-budget sci-fi fantasy apocalyptic futuristic thing that feels very 80s. It looks like something that you would watch on cable in the 80s. It, it just feels very retro. Uh, the creator of that reached out to me on Twitter, or he followed me on Twitter, and then he emailed me and said, hey, I'm doing this project, would you like, and I want to I have this character, it's live action, and I want to have this character dubbed over, and I want to have you do that, would you be interested in doing that? I said, yeah, that sounds fun. So, yeah, check it out, Manborg. <laughs> super cheesy and awesome. It is super cheesy Yes, yes, yes sir? Ezreal, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun. I had no idea League of Legends was going to be as huge as it became because when I recorded Ezreal, the game wasn't out yet. Um, and I know people a lot of, take, give him a lot of hell and grief. It's like, oh, he looks like Meg Ryan. Like, oh, he's a girly man. Like, whatever. Check cleared. No. Um, I mean, it's just me doing a Gohan voice. In fact, the creators 
told me that it's like when he does his magic power up, it's kind of like Dragon Ball Z. It's like funny, I worked on Dragon Ball Z. Really? Oh my God! And then they just fanboyed out. <laughs> then I went on to record, you know, the Pulse Fire skin thing, and then I got uh, Jarvan and Graves, too. So yay! Yay, League. And I'm terrible at League. I played it for a few times and I went, I suck at this. Delete. It takes <sighs> yes, it does. Yes. I do play Street Fighter. I haven't played it online in a long time. I'm terrible. I button mash. Can't remember combos to save my life. <laughs> but if I chance upon a Hadouken, then I'll spam it. Hadouken! 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 It's like, stop that. Do something else. Like, I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> I'm so terrible. I'm better at Marvel. You, you button mashing works on Marvel vs. Capcom. Street Fighter, you need actual skill. But he should play Marvel vs. Capcom and play as Rocket Raccoon because he sounds nothing like Bradley Cooper, of course. He has like an Australian accent for some reason. Like, what? Cray Cray. I have three minutes. I have three minutes. What will I say in three minutes? Next time on Dragon Ball. That's a good one. I'll save that for the end. Yes, sir. Yay. What's something that you think someone should do before they get to recording a demo? Because frankly, I don't think I'm ready. Yeah, well, you could record demos for practice. You could record them at home for practice. I would never submit that because you don't know what your potential as an actor is without taking acting classes. So I think training first is key with legit acting coaches or voice coaches so that they'll know what kind of copy to read you for. Your demo is a compilation of work you've done, right? But if you're a beginner, you haven't worked. So your demo is going to be all fake. It's all these, uh, read this script and this script and this script, all the little five to eight second blurbs that compile into one minute long, roughly. Now you can do that and practice and you can play them for whatever your acting teachers and they can see like, well, you need to work on this. Let's brush on that. Cause you may end up excelling at one kind of read that you'd had no idea. That's why it, doesn't make sense to throw your money away at producing a professional demo without any acting training because they'll gladly take your money. They'll give you a competent, technically proficient, great sounding demo, but it doesn't mean you're a great actor. That's the key. If you listen to a lot of these demos from voice actors that work all the time, they're not necessarily that interesting to listen to. It's not about production value per se. Obviously, it's done on a really good mic and all that it doesn't sound like a $10 Logitech headset mic or anything like that. But when it's all drowned in music and sound effects and vocal effects where you can't even tell what voice it is, that's overkill. And it's like, no, that's, that's pull away from that. But take advantage of technology and record things and your demo is going to evolve. And you'll say, well, this cut is a little bit weaker than this one. This one's stronger. Avoid redundant excerpts. You know, you want to have... The, a similar voice multiple times on the demo. It's like, hey, this angry guy sounds like that character. I'm like, no, don't do that. Establish one kind of sound and then move on to the next one. But your demo is going to start with something like your own speaking voice. That's your signature sound. That's when they know that when they listen to Kyle Hebert, the first cut on there is my something with my natural voice. So they go, all right, that's what we know what we're going to get. Um, yes. So hopefully that helps. One minute. One minute. What will happen? Yes. What do you think? Do it go. Do all the voices. Do all the voices? Oh my god. The answer lies in the heart of battle. Hadouken! Let's go, Akamaru. Fang over Fang! Tell me, Renji, does Rukia deserve to die? Who the hell do you think I am? <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Oh boy, Kiki's getting married. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to have an autograph session. I'm going to sign and take pictures and do your voicemail or do shout outs to your friends who couldn't make it. All at autographs, which are at. Wait for it. It is in main events for Brass Pizza at 245, and for guests, it's 315. So 315, unless you're a Brass Key. key. Brass Key can be two... 
245. In here? Yes. Okay, so we'll see you back here after a while. Yay, thank you.